All right, so we're going to look at solving uh, problems for with linear velocity. Uh, these are the examples that I'm going to work. Uh, example 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You can take a look at them. Each problem will have its own video. So this will be video uh, example 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And there's 5. It's and Check it out. It has a little little twist to it there so you know check them out so but before we get into looking at the problems let's look and see linear velocity it says if P is a point on a circle of radius R and P, and P moves a distance s on the circumference of the circle in an amount of time T then the linear velocity V of P is given by the formula uh, v equals s over t, where s is theta times r, and theta is in radians. So basically, s, you should recognize this formula. This is just the formula for arc length. Okay, And it's important that you make sure that theta is in radians. Okay, And also, to find the linear velocity, we can write uh, the linear velocity v is equal to r times omega and omega is the angular velocity so if you know the angular velocity and the radius just plug it in there and that'll give you the linear velocity also alright so let's take a look at an example alright so let's look at the fifth example on linear velocity uh, this one has two parts uh, this one has a little, this one, this one might be a little tricky down here, but we'll see what we can do. Alright, so Earth revolves on its axis once every 24 hours. Assuming that Earth's radius is 6,400 kilometers, find the following. Linear speed at Quito, Ecuador, a city on the equator. Alright, so notice they don't tell us what units to put, uh, the answer in. So, well, they give us the time in hours and they give us the distance in kilometers. So, since they didn't tell us, this is the uh, units they give us. So, let's find our answer in kilometers per hour. Okay. Uh, all right. So, we've got the, well, first, let's write down the formula linear velocity is s over t and we know s is r times theta okay where we know r is the radius theta is the uh, angle in radians okay so let's just come over here and okay so there's the earth and there's a city right here on the equator so it's it's going around okay so it's going around the earth here's its axis so it's spinning I can't I can't draw this very good but it's spinning around the axis okay so this point's going around in a circle okay it's not it's not traveling this way it's it's going back or it's following this path here. All right. So, well, let's find R. Well, we know that R is 6400. Let me change back to blue. So, R is 6400. Okay. And then we need theta. Okay. Well, they tell us it revolves on its axis once every 24 hours. So when this this point here, okay, when this point is going around and then back, that's one revolution. Okay, that's 360 degrees. It makes a complete circle. But since theta needs to be in radians, that's 2 pi. Okay, now since we've got r and theta we can get s is 6400 pi I'm sorry 
6400 times 2 pi. So S is 128,000 pi. Okay, that's S. So now let's get our linear velocity, which is S, which is 128,000 pi over T. Okay, so remember this 128,000 pi, which is S, that's arc length, right? S is R times theta. So how long did it take to travel S? Well, it told us 24 hours, right? One revolution took 24 hours. So our time T is 24. And so now all we have to do is punch this into our calculator. So 128,000 times pi, and then divide that by 24. And so that's going to be, and I'll just round it to one decimal. Okay, so 16,755 point two, and that's what? Kilometers per hour. So there's the distance. I'm sorry, that's the um, linear velocity there. All right, so let's take a look at the next part. We've got the linear speed at Salem, Oregon, and it's halfway from the equator to the North Pole. All right, so let's go ahead and write our formula. Okay. So linear velocity is s over t, and we know s is r times theta. Okay. So let's come over here and draw a picture. All right. Now, here's the center, and the, equ the equator would go right through here. Okay. But it tells us that Salem, Oregon is halfway between the between the equator and the North Pole. So it would be somewhere about right in here. Okay. And and we know that this distance here is sixty four hundred. Alright. Now S is r times theta. So so the thing that you've got to understand here is that this object it's not going around like this. It's going see if there's our if there's the axis, it's going around the axis. So the line that it's traveling would be around here. Okay, that's what it's doing. So you can see that our radius okay just comes out to here. Okay, so that point it's it's just traveling this. It's not out here on the equator. So we know this is sixty four hundred. This would be a right angle and we need R. Okay. Well, we know that the axis and the equator, that would be 90 degrees. And if it says this point's halfway between this, we get theta is 45 degrees. So we have this angle here. We know the hypotenuse, and we're looking for R, which is the side adjacent. So we know that cosine 45 is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And so we've got the radius is 6400 times cosine 45 degrees. And so... Let's see what we get. 
make sure your calculator's in degrees to calculate this. So we've got 6400 times cosine 45. And so that's 4525.4834. Okay. So that's that's our radius there. So we know that r our radius 4525. Now I'll go ahead and put the decimals so we can get a accurate answer. So there's our radius, okay? That and and then the rest of the problems work the same, okay? So we're going around this smaller circle. See, instead of going around the equator like we did in the previous part, we're just, I mean, we're still going around a circle. So for it to make one revolution, okay, it still takes 24 hours to make that one revolution. And so we're going to, and theta is still going what? One revolution is 360 degrees. Okay, it's just the radius isn't as big. So, so theta is 360, or since we need it in radians, theta would be 2 pi, okay, for that one revolution. And so now we get S, which is R times theta. So that's going to be 9050. And I'll round this to two decimal places, so 0.97. And I probably do. Well, I tell you what, when you when you multiply this times two, you end up with 9,050.966799. And what I think I'm gonna do just to, is round it to 9,051. Okay. If you need to, just use all the decimals. All right. And then that's gonna be times. 2 pi, I'm sorry, times pi, okay, so that's s, okay, 9051 times pi. So now let's just plug everything in, so I get my linear velocity is s, which is 9051 pi over t. Now Remember s that's the that's the arc length. So how long did it take it to travel s? Well, remember up here it took it 24 hours. And so t is 24. And so I get my linear velocity is 9051 times pi and then divide that by 24 and I get 1,184 point, uh, let's just do 0.8, 1,184.8, and that would be kilometers per hour, okay? So I hope that uh, video helped. Um, give me a like, share, and subscribe, and check out my other videos, and thanks for watching.